Well, welcome everyone to um, presentation on the construction management program here at Roger Williams University. My name is Dr. Michael Emmer and I am the program coordinator for both the undergraduate program and the graduate program. So let's I have a short presentation here and then we'll take, take some questions on, on the, at the end of the uh, presentation. So for class of 2024, two questions that you are probably asking and that we would like to address and hopefully get, give you a better understanding of what we do is why major in construction management, which I think is the coolest discipline on campus um, by far. And then why choose Roger Williams University? So that's what this presentation is gonna sort of circle around those two uh, themes. So let's talk a little bit about the school. We have eight schools of study on two campuses. There's a campus in Bristol and there's another campus in Providence, Rhode Island. And we like to think we deliver a very unique experience with a very, in a very personalized way. And the way that manifests itself is we have um, a lot of student faculty interaction that you usually only find at small colleges. 100% um, of our classes are taught by experienced faculty we also use um, adjunct faculty from industry, industry professionals that bring a lot of experience and project experiences to the program. We have no large lecture halls. I think the largest one on campus is around, Felicia can correct me, maybe 85, 90. I think it's like 150 or so. But they're never full with students. No, no, no. I had a class in there during one of my years for a core class, and it was like 30 of us in that yeah. giant lecture hall in CAS. So. so the point is, we don't have very large classes. Our average lecture in the construction management program is around 26 to 27 students, and our labs are usually around 12 to 15 students. So you'll never have a lecture hall full of hundreds of students that you would get at a larger university. We've taken a little bit different approach. Our faculty to student ratio is 14 to one, so you can see that you're gonna get a lot of upfront face time with your faculty, if you so desire. And I, as well as most of our faculty have an open door policy in terms of um, when you need help, it's available. And you'll find that our faculty are very dedicated to the student experience. So why construction management? Well other than the fact that I love it, and I've been doing it a long time, it's never boring. Every project is different. Um, you sort of can, when you drive by a project you help work on, you, you have that sense of pride and you physically created that building. And that's, that's a pretty good feeling when you think about it. Um, you have an opportunity to work with people and manage materials, manage equipment. This is a people business. You're constantly, dialoguing with engineers and architects and owners and contractors and bankers, all to further the uh, progress of the project. We have many exciting career paths leaving from, as you graduate from the program, you can become um, a project manager, a superintendent. Some people go into being a building inspector. Um, some people become estimators or schedulers. So there's a lot of choices that you have uh, when you graduate. And what I like about it most, it's outdoors and it's variety. Um, even if you're building um, 7-Elevens around the country, every project's still different. Different weather, different soil conditions, different sets of contractors. So every project is different and it's that sense of variety is what kind of what draw me to the, uh, to the construction industry. Um, faculty relationships, we provide connections for internships and summer jobs. Um, myself and as well as the other faculty have a lot of contacts in industry, strong connections. So if you want to do an internship, there, there's a lot of demand out there. Um, we also stay connected with our alumni. They are an important part of our program because they bring back experience to our program. They do guest lectures, they do speaker series, they donate to the program. So we got a really strong uh, construction management alumni base, and I probably keep in touch with well over 100 on a regular basis, and they're always willing to come back and give back to our um, construction management program. 
And basically, by having students in multiple classes, I see students as freshmen, sophomore, generally not junior, but as seniors again. But that four-year relationship really creates a strong bond between the faculty and the student and makes the student feel like they're not just a number in a large group. So after graduation, what can you do? Well, you can go work for a commercial building contractor. We're getting more and more um, demand or desire for students to get more um, academic instruction and residential construction. So you can go into home building and, or you can go into heavy civil construction, building roads and bridges and tunnels and highways and more civil type projects. Or you can go on to graduate school. We have a master's program in construction management here at Roger Williams. You can also do an MBA on campus or even a law degree. So if you don't want to go to work right out of school, you can always go on to graduate school and further your education. So this is how our credit structure lays out. Uh, you can see we have um, 30 credits in general education and electives, writing and communications, lots of math and sciences, business and law. And then the heart of our program is 52 credits in construction science and construction classes. So that's a total of 130 credits to graduate. Now, some students do graduate with less than that. If you test right into Calc 1 as a freshman, you, that would be three credits less. But that's how our credits are laid out for our program. So why Roger Williams University small classes? Project-based learning is um, sort of a kind of a new thing in academia that we're seeing a lot of, but in the construction management program, we've been doing this for 20 years. It's always been project-based learning that, that, and up from our approach. You can get a business minor as a result of your uh, construction management degree. And then every student on campus has to do a core concentration in a discipline outside of your school. So you can choose from dance or photography or foreign language, marine biology, anything that's outside your discipline, you take five additional classes in that whatever discipline you choose. There's also an opportunity to get another minor if you add one more course to your core concentration. So it really looks good on the um, transcript to have two minors and it only takes that one extra course. We are accredited by the American Council of Construction Education. And for those of you that are not familiar with accreditation, it's basically telling you and mom and dad that the program you're about to enter meets a minimum set of standards for construction education. And those standards are fairly high. So it's not, it's minimum standards, but the standards within that organization are very high. And we have to demonstrate how we're doing that every six years with an accreditation visit. We have a very strong advisory board. The Construction Management Professional Advisory Board is the most active board on campus. It's also the only board for any program on campus that has a scholarship. And they do a lot for us. They raise money for us. They provide guest speakers. They provide job site tours that we'll do, go out and see some construction sites and how active they are. They provide a lot of advice on curriculum. So they're a very strong component of our program. And we have a faculty advising model. So you're assigned a faculty advisor. It will be a CM faculty um, in your freshman year and you maintain that same advisor through the whole four years, which is really good to keep that connection. So we can understand your aspirations, your goals, um, what your career path might look like, make sure you're taking the right classes and help you resolve issues in terms of getting into classes. So why Roger Williams University? Well, for me, it's location. I feel like I'm going to resort every day for work. <laughs> it's right on the water. It's a beautiful campus. And if you like to smell the ocean air, this is definitely the place for you. So why construction management? Well, we do a lot of hands-on. In this particular picture, students are doing soil tests. And so a key component of any new building is to evaluate the soil to make sure that it can hold 
the loads of the building. So in this particular lab, the students are doing five or six different types of soil tests, um, recording the data and then analyzing it and plotting it to report back on what the potential load bearing capabilities are of that soil. It's a lot of hands-on work in the lab. In this picture, we have a small structural steel building we built inside our new um, lab space. It mimics a structural steel building on many, many construction sites. And we even have, you can see the little yellow strap hanging off that piece of steel. We have a crane in our lab and we set the steel with the crane mimicking actually setting steel on a construction site. So it's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, more lab activities on the left are the students forming concrete walls. Now I'm using the most common type of form ply system in the industry. And another picture on the right of, of setting steel with the crane. So here's just a quick time lapse of setting this structural steel project. Hoping it works. No, well, hold on. So that was a time lapse of a building where we were still over in the Hawkworks facility, but it gives you a good idea. And you can see that every student is wearing a hard hat, safety glasses, safety vests. So we really push um, lab safety as well as trying to mimic uh, the safety requirements on a typical construction site. We always recommend that students do things outside the classroom in support of the program. And we recommend that student get involved in at least one club activity, whatever interests them. So we have a number of options. We have the um, CM club, which is kind of the overall umbrella club, club for all the uh, students. And it handles the student competitions, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. Um, we have the Honor Society, Sigma Lambda Chi for construction management. We have the United States Green Building Council student chapter. If you're interested in a green building or sustainable projects. Uh, women in Construction Club, which is growing very fast, um, where the women do activities um, to support the program. And we have an AGC student chapter, which is the Association of General Contractors. And one that's new is the National Association of Home Builders. We're just forming a new chapter because we're getting more and more interest in interest in residential construction. So it's a lot of choices for you. Most students pick one or two um, to get involved in, but I definitely recommend getting involved in at least one to some degree. And there's a Sigma Lambda Chi group, Construction Management Honor Society. Student club has activities. One of their main activities to have a speaker series where we bring in an industry professional once a month to talk to the students on some specific topic. In this case, this is Griffin Electric showing their uh, virtual reality and augmented reality um, software. And I call them toys. Um, <laughs> and this is really becoming a key component in our business. It seems like a way to have fun, but it is used a lot in our business now. It's not, it's looked on more, more and more as a necessary tool than just a, something to play around with. Um, we have students that do pre-reviewed research. So they, uh, we've had students pre present at the national conference um, or the international conference. So we've had students go overseas to the UK and present their research. So if you are interested in doing that, it's definitely something you can get involved working with a faculty and doing a research at the undergraduate level. We uh, do a lot of participation in student competitions. 
we have um, the, the national competitions for the Associated Schools of Construction. Uh, we have four different categories, commercial building, design build, heavy highway and pre-construction. There's also the design build Institute of America student competition. And recently last year, we entered the international competition. So this is what happens at the competitions is they lock the students in a hotel room for 15 hours and they come up with a solution to a problem for a real construction project. And then um, on the left-hand side of the screen, you do a presentation to the judges and then we have a big awards dinner at the end and award the top teams in each category. Roger Williams University in our region, which is the Northeast region, has performed the best of all 24 schools over the last 20 years um, that this competition has been in. A lot of first places over the years in many different categories. So the re national competition last year, we went to Reno and we placed second in the country in um, pre-construction. It was actually more of an engineering type problem so that, that these guys really stepped up and performed well. So finishing second in the country was pretty good. And then recently this year, we went to an international competition and we placed first in the international competition in the UK in the cost estimating, which was quite an accomplishment seeing that we had to work in decimal and we had to work with British pounds. So we had to make sure we had our currency rates uh, set up and make sure we had our conversion from decimal to feet and inches and vice versa. So it was, it was a tough competition. And um, the judges uh, commented that we were extremely well prepared and very creative in providing a solution. So I am going to be taking a team to the UK every year from now. <laughs> Student internships, um, the average in the bottom right hand corner is 2.25 for the four years that you're here. That's actually gone up. That's a little bit old data. Um, most students are doing three internships now. Um, it's a zero credit course, but we help you arrange them. And unlike a lot of internships on the Roger Williams campus, ours are paid. So they're making 15 to $20 an hour and you're learning, uh, usually in the summer months. Most employers now look for at least two internships on your resume when you go for that first full-time job. We have study abroad opportunities for construction management students. Typically our students either go to Italy or Australia. Um, we recently started an exchange program with a school in the UK where we swap students. In fact, we have our first swap coming up next spring where we're sending one of our undergrads to a school in um, Birmingham and they're sending one of our undergrads here for a semester to learn how we do things. And there's opportunities way more than what's listed on that screen of places to go wherever you want in terms of destination. Um, in the fourth year of your program, we have a capstone course where the students compete in teams against each other from a real project to come up with real solutions. It's sponsored by industry and it's a competition format. And there's a jury of industry professionals and alumni that review your submittals, and it's sort of a culmination of four years of construction study. And then we have a, at our annual construction management senior and alumni banquet, we award the uh, winners of each um, category from each company. So it's a really good time. S students get to, get to show off what they did with their sponsor. It, uh, we have a nice dinner, a lot of alumni come back. Some alumni have come back for the last eight or nine years. And we get alumni coming in from all over the country come back for this dinner. <laughs> this is a list of some of our employers. That's a who's who of construction throughout the United States. That's not just Rhode Island, that's not just New England and Northeast, that's the whole country. And in a lot of cases, companies like Turner and, and um, Lend Lease um, are international companies. And we have really good contacts if you want to graduate and work out of state. I always recommend the students to get out of Dodge and sort of see how things are done around the country. You can always move back here, but there's a lot of opportunity out there in terms of contractors. 
This is one of the testimonials. Gilbain has historically been our strongest company in terms of how many graduates to hire. They typically hire anywhere from two to four per year. And Steve Devell is an active member of our advisory board. He's the senior vice president in charge of all of the um, New England company. And if you want to just take a second and read this um, testimonial, but basically he's saying our students are ready to hit the ground running. Um, when they graduate, they have the tools and the skills to be productive right out of the gate. Employment data. So last year, everybody got a job. We had 36 graduates. The average uh, starting salary was around 62,500. This year, that average is tracking around 65,000. Um, and most of our graduates have gotten multiple offers this spring. Some of them as many as three or four. And those are just a list of the graduates that's from 2019. And there's our senior alumni banquet. On the left-hand side is the uh, high point of the banquet, the raw bar, <laughs> which basically is like throwing a piece of red meat in a water full of sharks. The students gather around that pretty quickly and go through the raw bar. It's a lot of fun though, it's a lot of camaraderie. Students come back year after year. EJ, Ryan and Kristen on the bottom there, they come back every year since 2013. So it's well supported. That's a picture of our class of 18 graduating class. Our new Seacom Labs building, which is just finished and we moved in in January, um, has given us a lot of flexibility and room for expansion in all our lab activities. The picture on the lower right is the construction management materials and methods lab. And we actually do build a house in there in the fall term in that methods class we build a small house right inside the lab using the crane as much as possible. Um, it's actually actually bigger than that, what's depicted in the rendering here. So I wanna thank you for uh, thank you so watching this presentation and I'll open up to questions uh, either specific about the program or Felicia can answer uh, questions about the university. Hey, thank you so much for your uh, presentation. That was awesome. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to put them right in the chat um, and then we can get to them. Again, any questions about the construction management program, um, maybe the engineering program, if you're kind of deciding between the two um, or anything about the university, just feel free to throw your questions into the chat and the Professor and I will get to them. Okay, looks like our first question has come in and it says, are there safety certifications as part of the program, um, let's say OSHA? Um, so in our, we have a project management and safety course and we do not, students do not get certified. And we found that the reason that is, is most students in their internships get their um, OSHA 30 hour certification through their, through their employer. And so it's a lot better to have that happen because yeah, they're getting it through a company they're working for. So that's how we handle that. And usually it's not, it's the employer pays for it. They just, students get it when they do their internship. Great. Thank you. Um, are there any clubs and programs geared towards entrepreneurship? Um, do you see any graduates go on to start their own business? Um, excellent question. So. Generally speaking, with an undergraduate degree, you don't see too many students going out and starting businesses because they don't have the experience. If you want to start a business in this day and age, you need funding, you need financial backing, usually a bank. And it would be unlikely that a bank would participate in a new business adventure. But that being said, um, two points. A lot of our students now are coming from family businesses. So they are, the expectation is they graduate from this program, they go back and work for a family business for mom or dad or uncle or aunt or grandma or grandpa, and they'll take over that business someday. And the second point is we have a master's degree in construction management, which where the specific focus is to prepare you either for upper management in a large company or specifically prepare you to start your own business with a, from a master's degree. 
Thank you. Um, so another question is, um, if I was accepted under the architecture major, but I want to change my major to construction management, um, how would I go about that? So um, that's just a pretty easy process. So if anyone was accepted to another major or anyone wants to switch a major around, um, it's right on your student portal where you go to check your acceptances and everything. Um, you just fill out the major change form and then that will get processed and you'll be notified. So if you want to switch your major around, um, that would be the way to do it before you get to Roger Williams. Um, another question is, uh, would you recommend majoring in construction management and minoring in historic preservation or vice versa? Um, there's, we actually have a number of students that minor in architecture or historical preservation. It's pretty common. The biggest group of students that take our minor are architecture students or historical preservation students. Um, I'm sure you could do it the other way around, um, but you don't see too many CM minoring in because um, there's some restrictions on what core concentrations and minors you can pick. So, uh, but I haven't seen a, any of my CM students minor in um, historical preservation. So I don't, it's possible, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, and that could be like a good thing to put together, but I'm sure maybe the courses are kind of similar in those. So, um, you know, one or the other would be pretty good too. Um, another question is, so if I was just taking the construction management minor, um, what courses would I be taking? Well, I, I don't know right offhand, but we, uh, we have in the catalog a list of courses that you take if you're taking a minor. So you're going to take some, um, some courses that um, deal with technology and the typical software used in construction management, courses on scheduling, estimating, um, you can take surveying course. So it's not every course in our program in the minor, but it's most of them. Thank you. Um, another question is, what laptop would you recommend uh, for construction management, like Mac, PC, or what kind okay. of laptop? That's an easy one for me, not Mac. <laughs> and it's not because I don't like Macs, because I don't like Macs. But <laughs> the best is the Surface Pro, the latest version, 6 or 7, because Macs don't run the 3D software well at all. They also, other types of software, um, 4D software doesn't run. And... Um, if you buy a Mac, you're going to be at a real disadvantage in some of the classes because it'll force you to work from the cloud on some programs, whereas versus having the software right on the computer. I, I tell every parent, I have a Surface Pro 6. It's by far, it, it has the power, it has the speed, it has the graphics. It's small to carry around. You can pop the, pop the screen off and use it as a tablet. Um, it's a screen writable, so you can write to the screen if you're doing a virtual presentation, you can write to the screen. So that that's my recommendation. Great. Thank you. That's really helpful. <laughs> a lot of students have that question. So that was a very good question to ask. Um, let's see. So uh, once I graduate, am I certified everywhere um, or only in Rhode Island? And would I have to take another class to be certified if I wanted to be uh, somewhere other than Rhode Island? Well, it's a little misconception about certified because um, Certification is not done by an academic institution. Um, every state has a different way of certifying um, a company or a person in the construction business. So like for Massachusetts, you have to become a licensed superintendent if you're gonna manage projects and that's a licensure a certification from the state. In other states, it's not the person that's licensed, it's the company that's licensed. So you don't get a certification coming out of school. That's something you do as a, as a part of lifelong learning, um, depending on what state you're in. Every state does it different. There's no magic pill here. There's no common ground, really. Thank you. Um, so another question about um, the type of laptop. So um, is a Mac, would a MacBook Pro be OK for construction management um, if you had one? If you have it, I, you know, I'm not asking to go out and have mom and dad spend a bunch more money, but when you get into some, some of the classes, some of the softwares won't run on a Mac. It's just a nature of our, of, of our industry. Um, so, you know, if, if you have something already, it's, it's a little more difficult in some cases when you're working from the cloud to run some of the um, high power so, um, three and 40 software programs, 5D even when you're doing scheduling in class. 
Um, yes, a lot of students have Macs, but we're slowly telling new students to get away from that. So they're not at a disadvantage in some of the classes. Mm. Okay, so another question is, um, what times are the construction management classes typically? Um, you... Our classes um, run Monday through Friday, eight to four. Mm -hmm. There are some courses that are offered at night. Um, and there are a couple of courses that are offered online, not very many. I'm mm -hmm. sure coming out of this crisis we're in, that's probably gonna change a little bit, but uh, pretty much if you set your schedule up right and you have a, you're in good contact with your advisor, you can probably get away with only having to be in class four days a week and try and schedule one day where you don't have to be in class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very easy um, and flexible kind of to, to make your schedule. So there's classes that run like Monday, Wednesday, Friday in like 50 minute intervals. And then there's like Thursday, Thursday classes, which are like an hour and 20. Um, so sometimes you can arrange it, you know, in, in ways that would be best for you and like your learning style. Um, so there's a really a lot of different ways that you can put classes together um, for sure. Um, so another question is, so what kind of um, like background information should we have before we get to RWU? Um, so maybe like what types of classes would you recommend um, like taking in high school or what would be beneficial to know um, just before coming to Roger Williams in the construction management program? Um, well, I always, I always tell, you know, potential students that if you can do, if you can work for uh, in construction for the summer before you start college, any part of construction. Um, for a family business, just a general labor on a site, get any kind of experience on a job site. It gives you a better insight as to where you're going in your academic career. Um, that, that's probably the best recommendation. Um, you have to be fairly good at math because you got to get through calculus. So if you're struggling with math in high school, um, you might want to brush up on that. Um, you'll get tested when you come into the university and they will play, it's a math placement test. So they will place you in the appropriate math class, depending on those skills. I would recommend if you have the opportunity to try and grab some AP credits in high school, um, which are transferable in certain things like writing and English and other topics, um, AP math, AP physics. So you take advantage of that. That's just less credits you have to take here at school, less credits you get charged for. So those are some of the things. Perfect. Thank you. Um, another question is, could you speak a little bit more about the study abroad opportunities? Um, a student is particularly interested in the one that you listed that said Hawaii. Oh, well, the, the study abroad, did you say Hawaii? Yeah, Hawaii. You had Hawaii. Uh, technically, that's not study abroad, but um, I that was one CM student went to Hawaii for study abroad experience through the University of Hawaii. That was probably eight, nine or 10 years ago. Um, the most common destination is Italy where they take their core concentration classes. Um, and I'm not a big fan of that. I, I much rather would see you go in a study abroad experience where you're taking construction management classes. Like they, you can do in Australia, especially the UK, Scotland. Um, I think they have one set up for Germany. So you're spending your time abroad still advancing your construction education. But the, the one in the UK, the exchange program is probably gonna get you the best, most construction management coursework in the study abroad experience of any of the options. Great, thank you. Um, so I just can speak a little bit more about studying abroad in general. So there are those semester long study abroad programs that you can do where you would go away for an entire semester. Um, and then we also have what I like to call like short term study abroad programs. And so this could be a class that a professor hosts abroad during our winter intercession or over the summer, um, like a three to four week class. You'll spend part of your time at Roger Williams and then the rest of it will be abroad. Um, and then we also have clubs and organizations that go abroad too um, for week long service trips, sometimes during spring break or over the summer. Um, so there's really a ton of different ways that you can get that abroad experience. If going away for a whole semester seems like it's a little bit too long, um, there are those short term programs that you can look into as well. Um, some of them could be major specific like an elective in your major and other ones could just be interest based. Um, so it's it's kind of up to you and there's a ton of different offerings with that for sure. One of our um, CM faculty, Dr. Chellick, for about 
four or five year, years in a row, he took a group to, um, to his home country, Turkey, in the summer for a two week study abroad for a three credit course. So uh, that was pretty interesting. So there's always faculty doing those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's tons of study abroad opportunities. Um, so I just kind of wanted to bring up those other ones as well. Um, I was like, there's another question about um, like where the construction management classes are. So um, do construction management students only have classes in the Seacom labs? Um, they're either in the Seacom labs building or in our main school, their existing school of engineering building. Now that's for the construction classes. Mm -hmm. If they're taking physics, math, general education, core concentration, core classes, that's all over campus. Yeah. But it's a small campus geographically, so you never have more than a, from your dorm, maybe 10 minute walk. Even on the south dorms up the hill, you maybe 12 minutes. So. Not far at all. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, does anyone else have um, any questions that you can think of? Um, I'll wait like a second or two to see if any last minute questions come in. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my email address right in this chat. Um, it's just fgreco at rwu.edu. So um, if anyone has any questions about anything, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, Professor, if you want to put your email in, that's totally fine. Um, if not, I can direct people um, up to you. Um, I got to find the chat box first. Oh, just uh, hover over the screen again and hit the little chat at the bottom. Really? Actually, I think I can I can put it in for you if you'd like. Yeah, just put put a type it in. Okay. Okay. So um, that is Professor's email. If you wanted to email him about anything as well. Um, so thank you everyone for coming. Um, thank you so much, Professor, for all your information. Um, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their night. Thank you everyone and reach out if you have any questions. Bye everyone, thank you.